this is all part of, of our Celebration of Mind um, event this year. It's a virtual event organized by the Gathering for Gardner Foundation. And today we are uh, on the 21st of October. It's Martin Gardner's birthday. And it's, it's really great to, to be able to have this, this amazing uh, Celebration of Mind and with one of the main themes and one of the things that, that Martin Gardner uh, made famous and also that made him famous uh, and so it's it's great to to have our celebration of mine which celebrates exactly the legacy of Martin Gardner and today our speaker is Anne Schwartz uh, who is a flexagon expert and has done many many talks all over the world and for many many different in institutions I could not do, do her honors uh, mentioning everything um, uh, but without further ado, I will pass over to Anne Schwartz to talk about Down the Rabbit Hole with Flexagons. Okay, this is what can happen to your desk when you really get into Flexagons. Your life will never be the same again and you will be totally obsessed. Now I'm going to do the talk about how Flexagons started. If you already know the story, hang in there because I'll be talking about some new things too. And what happened was in 1939, uh, a British graduate student in mathematics by the name of Arthur Stone came to Princeton, went out to buy paper for his loose leaf notebook, which in the UK they call a binder. And he found out that American paper was too big for his binders. So he started tearing off nice straight strips to, so his paper would fit. And then he started folding up in different shapes. One of them was a hexagon that was divided into six equilateral triangles that had some curious properties. And here is a painted example of what he found. And that was a red face, here's a blue one, here's a yellow one with red boxes. And then we're gonna go back to the smiley face. And as when I flip it over, the triangles have changed. So now the red boxes are a yellow star. We have a white star here. And I've turned that smiley face into a frown and flipped it over again, I guess. So smiley was a frown, there he is. So what uh, Stone did then is he told three of his buddies and look at them. I mean, you can't get better than this as in terms of smart friends. And they all became really involved with flexagons. And, oh, I forgot to say that when uh, Stone woke up the next morning after folding up the first flexagon, he had an epiphany and he thought, well, if I make it twice, the strip twice as long, I think I'll get six surfaces that'll come up. And he was right. Anyway, these he and his three friends called themselves the the Flexagon Committee, they coined the word Flexagon from flexical and flexible and polygon. They introduced a nomenclature. The first prefix stood for the number of faces, which is what they call the surfaces, and the second stood for the number of sides of the polygon. So the first Flexagon that I showed you has three faces and six sides, so it's a tri-hexaflexapolygon. They found that Flexagons have, hexaflexagons have varieties. So there are three different patterns from which you can fold up the hexaflexagon. One is the straight strip. One is a clover leaf looking pattern. And another one is um, a ring shaped hexagon or a hexagon shaped ring rather. And Tuckerman discovered what we still call the Tuckerman Traverse and he found out how to flex a hexaflexagon so that uh, you all the faces appear with the least number of flexes. So what happened? It, that was 1939, uh, World War II, Pearl Harbor, and all of our flexagon committee guys went off to help with the Allied cause. Famously, Feynman was at Los Alamos. And flexagons went underground for some time. But in 1956, our hero, Martin Gardner, published an article in Scientific American. And it was so popular. That issue was the best-selling issue of Scientific American for decades until Don Horton Conway published an article on his program life. And that's when it was 
I'm bested. So people have looking at hexahexaflexagons for decades. They know now that the varieties are linked to catalog numbers. So as I said, the uh, the varieties of the hexahexaflexagon are three. But if you make a hexahexaflexagon with 10 faces, it's, it, I think it's over 80 varieties. Those numbers grow very quickly. And in a hexahexaflexagon, you uh, have three faces that come up more often and three faces that come up less, much less often. And the triangles rotate in relation to each other. Now, on the right, you see a special Martin Gardner hexaflexagon that will be in your G for G14 registration bags if you go. So along with your schedules and things like that, you will get this flexagon with directions. You'll have to fold it up yourself. I didn't fold them all up. And it has three puzzles. So the faces that come up more often are have backgrounds of the primary colors, blue, yellow, and red. And the lesser faces have backgrounds of the secondary colors. So here's a face that comes up less often with uh, Scott Kim's Martin Gardner script. And here's a solution to one of the puzzles, the one and only Martin Gardner, Lewis Carroll scholar next to the proper image, author of over hundred books, magician and puzzler. There's Martin, skeptic, fads and fallacies in the name of science, journalist, hundreds of articles, columnist for 25 years, scientific American. And now I'm gonna continue my Tuckerman Traverse. That was a dead end, so I have to move over. This is a scramble, doesn't show the solution. By the way, it's my younger sister, Ella, who taught me how to make puzzles like this by lining up the correct images along the rim. Here's our G for G14 logo. Ah, another solution, some books by NG, Colossal Book of Mathematics with numbers, visitors from Oz, Martin Gardner's table magic, next to a magician, his autobiography. There's the cover of Undiluted Hocus Pocus and the annotated Alice next to Alice. Science, good, bad, and bogus. Now we're gonna keep flexing. Another scramble, scramble. Here is our, another of the secondary faces. And this looks like it could be a solution, but it's kind of a tease. There are images around the edge, but life is next to flexagons. No, no, no. And I think this is where I started, so I'm gonna I should be flipping it over soon. Yep, there I go. Scramble. Gathering for Gardner logo. Here's this, another one of those scrambles that looks like it could be right, but it isn't. Scramble. Scramble. We have one more solution. Here's our G for G14 logo. Looks a little bit different than it did on the other side. And here's our last solution, top Martin Gardner topics. Flexagons, next to the flexagon image, contaminos, life, monster curves, next to its image, non-periodic tiling, next to its illustration, and precise kiss. So you can make wonderful puzzles out of these things. But there are many, many other triangle, uh, excuse me, flexagons you can make out of triangles. And there are phenomena that keep popping up as I fold up these things. Hidden triangles, triangles that don't come out when you flex. Shape changes, especially pinwheels. Toggle triangles, which are pairs of triangles that are unattached at one vertex. I can swing back and forth and change the way things flex. Side exclusivity, that's when you only see a face on one side. You have to flip the flex gun over to see it on the other side. 
and Matryoshkas. Matryoshkas are my favorite. Those are flexagons in the flexagons, and I named them after the Russian nesting dolls. This is a hexagonal bronze dodecaflexagon. Here's the strip. It's made out of 30, 60 triangles. I picked this one because it has a lot of things that I just discussed in it. Those gray triangles are hidden triangles that never flex out flat, stay hidden for the most part. You can flex this along three radii like a hexaflexagon. And you have six faces, six colors and six sides, but it is not a hexahexaflexagon, obviously. So we, the nomenclature falls apart at this point. It has 12 blue triangles, 12 red triangles, and all the other colors have only six triangles each. One of the reasons is because the gray triangles take up the space. And this, these are some toggle triangles. They've changed the shape of that pinwheel, made it a hexagon, and it's gonna change the color combinations that show up in the flex. And I could go on about what the meaning of that, but I won't. So I got a little stuck there, flipped it over. All right, this is what I mean by a matryoshka. If I flex along two in radii and two radii, sometimes it can open up into a rhombus and the rhombus flexes. So here's one flex. Different color combination. I can uh, give a partial flex at the end. It's gonna open into a cup. And finally, here we see some of those gray triangles, two, four of them actually. And that's the only way the gray triangles show up. You can, you can flex a cup and see all of them. And move on. Okay, this is a, a little tetraflexagon made out of um, equilateral right triangles that deserves more attention. It's in a book by Gene Pedersen and Peter Helton uh, called Build Your Own Polyhedra, and it came out later as a mathematical tapestry. Peter Hilton, by the way, was the youngest co-breaker at Bletchley Park during World War II. In fact, someone played him in the movie, The Imitation Game. So Gene and Peter call, I've just been doing regular pinch flexes with this along in radii. You can flex along the diagonals and change things if you do this special, what they call the pass-through flex, reverse pass-through flex. And now I have a, the fourth face. So I have the, the aqua face. Whoops. I'm gonna pass through the blue and yellow face to get to the purple and pink face, back to aqua. Passing through the blue and yellow face to get to the sun face. And I'm showing you a decorated one so you can see how the get an idea how the triangles rotate. But I can't see the blue and yellow face flat. That's what I call side exclusivity on this side of the, the flexagon. I'm gonna have to flip it over, flip it over, flip it over. No, I'm still doing this. Come on, flip it over already. All right, one more time, hopefully. All right, now I see blue and yellow flat. And there's gonna be one face on this side that I'll only see in passing and that's the aqua side. So here we have the full sun, pinch flex, pass through aqua. What's interesting 
and I've made this flexagon with eight faces and 12 faces, there's always just one face per side that doesn't flex out flat. You'd think that maybe uh, it would increase with the number of faces, but it doesn't seem to do that. Now I add two more triangles and I get a hexagonal flexagon made out of isosceles right triangles. I showed this at one of the G4Gs, but again, I didn't know all the things it could do. So I think I only need two flexes at the time. This is called the double tuck. This is the double slide. And notice we have these nice diamond, solid colored diamond shapes in the face. Come on, you can do it. All right. And I think this also has side exclusivity. I think you have to flip over the flexagon to see all the co color combinations. And it's a pinwheel. We talked about pinwheels. And tucking that in, getting another face. So these are, that noise in the background, that's my cat. Oh dear. So it has a matryoshka, which I didn't know at the time. Yes, like I'm here. If you tuck the ends over of, in some of the states of the flexagon, not all of them, it turns into the little tetra flexagon that no one loved. It's quite stable. You can pinch flex it. You can also do the reverse pass through where you pull down the triangles. This is just making all the noise. Okay. So you get another face. Pinch flex again. She's loud. And at one point, the flexagon says, okay, that's enough. I'm going back to my other shape. Now this is what uh, you'll get in the gift bag. This is uh, my gift to the G for G14, it's a little preview. It's made out of 30, 60, 90 triangles. And uh, one of the things that fascinates me about this guy is that it operates along the same lines as the one we just saw. So we have these double diamond shapes coming up that you can fold over and do the double slide. You have to do a little tuck there, but you can do it. It's got toggle triangles. And uh, shush. And that's, now we have a new face. Toggles. To turn the flexagon into a pinwheel shape. There's the double tuck. And now we get a proper pinwheel without toggles. And I can't flex from one of those pinwheel shapes. I'm gonna need some help if someone can figure that out. I have to try to get Scott to help me. But I just flipped it over to keep flexing it. And let's move on. But there are flexagons and flexagons and flexagons. I could talk for three hours probably. There are ring flexagons um, that are really cool. The one on the upper right, the salmon colored one, I'm still trying to figure out what it does. The lower right, the one that's brown and blue, is when I started to explore. And I'd like to announce that Dr. Yossi L. Ron Scottsham and I are working on a book. I'm hoping to be the definitive book on flexagon and do all the things that you see on the 
screen. Scott's amazing. He has a terminology that he invented for flexes. And he has a program, which I call the dial of flexagon. You say, I want flexagon in this shape with these triangles. And as often as not, it will produce one for you. I work from the outside in. I'll fold up something, fold up a flexagon and then figure out what it does. I love the fact that it's a little world onto itself, has its own little rules and laws. And um, Scott goes from the inside out and Dr. Elron kinds of tries to put it all together. So I think we're a good team. Here is uh, some wonderful uh, flexagon sites that Scott Sherman's of Blow Your Mind. And Robin Mosley has a one that's just beautiful, beautiful uh, artwork. Um, I guess we're open for Q&A now. Yeah, and so perhaps we could go back to the previous slide so people can can still see the links uh, just for one more second. Um, I will I will try to make them available in the in the chat. But uh, okay. thank you so much for such a beautiful presentation. Yeah. Um, You're welcome. And I'm really I would really like to to start flexing myself now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well. For people who want to ask a question, uh, you should have the, the option to just raise your hand and I can give you the right to speak. Or if you prefer not to speak, you can just type your comment or question in the chat and I will and I will read it out loud. Uh, but I would prefer that, that you would ask your own question. Uh, meanwhile, we already have a question in the Q&A part. Um, uh, who someone asks if the Tukey you you showed on the slide is the same Tukey of Cooley and the Tukey who came up with the fast Fourier transform. Um, yeah, I just know that John Tukey um, was very big in the field of statistics. That's that's who he was. If what you're talking about is related to st statistics, that's probably him. He has a long CV if you if you look him up. He I know he's famous for discrediting the Kinsey report. So I hope that that answers. Well, that there have definitely been a lot of very very uh, famous uh, people being interested in flexicons. Um, I I've sh so so I've shared already some some of the resources you you. Uh, you presented here. Uh, some people are asking if, if we'll be able to see your slides um, or if they will be available. Um, I think this we can we can speak through, uh, over this uh, through email, but uh, everything that, that we can make available, we of course will on our website. So stay, stay tuned to the website. Yeah. Um, and we have a question by, by Ed Trick. You can now speak. Is there an enumeration that includes all hexaflexagons? That's what we're working on in the book. We're working on a, a, a nomenclature that will give each flexagon its unique name so that by looking at the name, you will know exactly what kind of triangles, what shape, how many faces, how many, I think, leaves in the, in the template. Can, can I follow up with one related question? Uh, has, yeah. anybody, has anybody looked into writing a computer program since most flexagons of higher order would be physically impossible to flex. You could easily on a computer uh, make any flexagon of any order and have the computer flex it for you, uh, you know, in a graphic. Has anybody done that? Um, I've seen computer graphics that of flexing, flex, flexing hexaflexagons on websites from years ago. Um, I think that's something that Scott may work on because he's a software designer. So he's been connecting flexagons to computers in many ways. So I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he manages to do that too. I would also follow up with a question about the design process of, of flexagons like the one that, that you, you are going to, to, to share at the Gathering for Gartner meeting. Um, how do you design these? Uh, do you use a specific program or do you just have the, the layout of the flexagon and then you just fill it in? 
Um, so what, what are your, your methods? Okay. Uh, I will say that Scott has what we call the dial of flexicon, where he says, I want a flexicon that does this, 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 and the computer spits it out. So he is working on that. I look at what shapes you can make out of triangles. And I have my own, I guess, folding algorithms or patterns that I follow to, to make the flexicon in that shape. And that's how I, that's how I do it. Some, some of it is accidentally just folding triangles from a long straight strip and see what it turns into. It's, it's kind of one of the fascinating things that happened um, lately is that, let me see if I can go back to the slide. Uh, yes, this, uh, the, the blue and brown flexagon on the right was a shape that I was folding the Gardner flexagon into to fit into its package without distorting a triangle. I was folding it into this shape. And then around the same time, Scott set, sends me an email saying that, that that's a flexagon. So I, now that I knew it was a flexagon, I was able to fold the strip into that shape and study it. <laughs> That's how crazy that was. And then I made the strip longer and made it more complicated with more, more, more colors and more faces. And then I did like a whole chart about it. So that'll probably be the flexagon for the G for G four fifteen. <laughs> so that's how looking, some of these things happen. <laughs> the, I'm looking forward to it. The, the flexagon on the right, the salmon colored one and the, the, the two hexagonal rings are actually flat. They're presented in uh, Gene Patterson and Peter Hilton's books as fl flat polyhedra. And I looked at them and I said, I bet they're flexagons and they are. They didn't know they were flexagons. So working on those two, it's just crazy. <laughs> How these things that, that's awesome. Let's also follow up question to, to, to the book you are working on. Um, how can you how can you say it's complete or what what this is? I, I feel that like it's it's an uh, in an in infinite family, uh, and so you need to have, define it in a certain way. So yeah. what makes it uh, the, the, the def definite uh, book about flexibility? What what makes it different? No, are what we... makes it the, the 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 ultimate flexible book or the definite. Well, we, we hope to have a, a, a definition that will fit all flexagons and um, a nomenclature that will fit all flexagons and that will study the, the inner workings of them. I keep, I play, almost play, the, I haven't told Scott this, but I play, try to stump Scott and I'll send him something, a flexagon. I'll say, does this fit your definition? And he says, yes, because of blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know? So... Um, I'm going to send him the the salmon colored one on the upper right and say, look how the look how the paths the triangles overlap each other. Does that still fit your your definition? Because most of the others there <laughs> they're not. So you're trying to break the definition. You're trying to find yeah yeah. I keep trying to stomp him and say, well, what about this one? <laughs> it flexes. <laughs> so it um, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. It's I'm, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to, to the book. Um, if so somebody, if there... Let me just say, if anybody wants to be on a list for the book, send me your name and your information and I'll start putting a list together for, for telling you when the book is done. Do you want to go forward back to the slide where people can see your email so we can, can sure, contact sure. There we are. I, I'm pretty sure you will get a lot of emails now. <laughs> oh, good, good. We can go to our uh, the, the the prospective publishers and say we already have a thousand people who want this book. So we'll see. <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, we have another question from from the chat, um, and it is asked: uh, One issue with flexagons is getting uh, thin enough papers to fold it tight. Do you use origami paper? No, I use, um, I'll show you. I use adding machine paper because it's already nice and parallel and I, I'm a straight strip kind of person. So I have lots of rolls and that's what I use. It's pretty strong. And for, for as a follow-up uh, question to that, 
for the more more complex uh, complex ones where you, where you have multiple directions to fold and where you have the the matryoshka ones and and so forth uh, i i find that that um, the paper tends to get worn out rather fast so there is only one use perhaps or they do get tired but i also after i paint something i sometimes spray it with this very poisonous clear gay <laughs> glaze that helps protect it and, and it keeps uh, your fingers from removing paint and things like that. But you have to be careful with it because it's not terribly safe and I hesitate to recommend it. But for instance, this one is, I, I covered with that glaze because I was presenting it at Oxford. So I, I, I wanted it to last more. This is a crazy one. So just as a disclaimer, be advised, only professionals uh, use, use this kind of place. You have to, to have proper flexidon uh, training first. Um, and, 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 <laughs> and as well, Martin Gardner advised, use with caution. You might just disappear and appear somewhere else. Yes. Like the story with uh, someone who had a tie and got caught in, in the flexidon. Yes. <laughs> <It's never laughs> um, <laughs> so if there are no more questions, I will ask you, Anne, uh, I will thank you very much, Anne, uh, for this amazing. Oh, I'd like to thank everyone who planned this event, put it together, took the time to get speakers, just to thank everyone for the celebration of mine very much. Well, we, we thank you very much and we thank all the attendees and um, it's, it's amazing to be part of, of such a big, big community and so many interesting talks. People in the chats are thanking you very much for the wonderful talk uh, and many yeah. flexagons and hexaflexagon enthusiasts. And so, um, yeah, thank you very much. Anne. Thank you. Beautiful talk. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>